Hi everyone, welcome to Snowbound Bud Volume 12. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, it's been a while, it's been a while. Um, I'm hoping this is recording right, because um, I've tested it out and I think the video didn't change for one at once. Um, yeah, it's been over a year. I see that, you can, you see that down there, you see it, the die, oh my god, it blinked. It blinked. Um, I've had a haircut for one. Look at me. <laughs> I look so. I've, I, I went to North Carolina actually. I went to uh, America. Went to a hot topic to visit. Uh, well, no, not not for that. But I went to America to visit my partner, and I basically had this whole glow up. So, this is the shortest my hair's been in over a decade, <laughs> basically. But anyway, enough about me. Volume twelve is out, and honestly, it feels like yesterday since I played Volume Eleven. So. Uh, what year is it? Um, I actually um, I reread some of them today. It was a bit. God, oh God, it's just them. It's them. Um. So predictions. Gonna start with predictions. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so obviously we know um, Cecily's gonna be really. She's gonna be okay by the end of the story. I think we know that, and I'm pretty sure. Oh, the only the other thing I could think of is that uh, not uh, Ormsi is probably going to get um, unalived because the, this all of this happened because he pretty much blackmailed the um, the Harbingers, didn't he? About Edelon, so he's I'm pretty sure they're going to kill him. I don't know if he's going to be uh, okay with that or not because I remember a line he was just saying he wants to prove a point on his way out. I was talking to this. I have a friend who knows what this is in real life, which is so weird. Um, anyway, enough about that. Uh, graphic de descriptions of violence. Okay, so yeah, it is working. Is that... Oh, oh no, I'm so scared. I'm so fucking scared. <laughs> but I'm also excited. It feels like so long since I've voiced these characters. And, um, well, I don't know. I don't know what I was going, going for there. I actually... Yeah, this is where we... This is where we ended. What a fucking cliffhanger. I keep looking at the mic. I still look at the mic and not the camera. You're kneeling at the altar of a profane sanctuary, chains clicking against the frigid concrete beneath your knees. A grim priest paces behind the slab, purple robes, blindfolded, bare skin catching flashes of candlelight. He's savouring the moment, clearly without consideration for your time, gesturing flu fluidly as he walks before coming... As he, as he walks before coming to rest with both palms down on the altar. Incense and candle smoke curls from the corner of the room, clouding, and co clouding the congregation of silhouettes wait waiting patiently in the wings. Your un unadjusted eyes can't pierce the veil quite yet. I would have just more accordingly if I knew I'd be attending a mass. It's more of a requiem regulator. I do more than fit the part. You glance down at the still drying blood caked on your collar, regulate a garb far beyond the reach of a little dry cleaning. Oh, but where are my manners? Aware of who you are, Miss Uyapara, yet I fail to introduce myself. I am the High Priest of the Harbages of the Apocalypse, Senru Narako. They kinda, you know, actually, no. no. A quick scan and subsequent rescan of the banks and names and faces you've committed to memory fails to bear any fruit. The troll before you is an unknown quantity. In case that image of me I showed at the start of this video was my reaction to seeing Senru in Volume 11. <laughs> the priest offers a cruel smile as if sensing your failure. It is so good of you to finally join us. It is. It really is so good of you to finally join us. Do you have any idea how much trouble we've gone through to get you here? 20. Hmm. At least 20. Put at least 20 of your scumbags into the ground. It is assuming you're count you count the blood purest clowns among your number. The sacrifice of a few expendable assets is hardly trouble, Regulator. You've come further than we had anticipated. Don't flatter yourself into thinking you've left a deeper cut than we're prepared to bear. I'd show you a real wound if you gave me a fair fight. Come now, Miss Iapara. Where a place fairness fears to tread. 
Oh. We're far from any stronghold. The only justice here is his. And I'm afraid you won't be living long enough to revel in his perfection. But I'm getting far ahead of myself. We have so much to talk about first. The smile she gives you is empty. This might be confusing. I'm, I'm pretty sure saying Rue goes by any pronouns. A pallet stillness pours... Do you know who else does? Me! <laughs> A pallet stillness pours from the cal calculated pacing of her words and the revenant effect she... Affect she infuses with them with. This is a person who believes things people can't help but believe. Who says things. Oh, there you are, you piece of shit. Speaking of Noxious, after volume 11, I had a drawing piece, and it was it had it has him and three others. I forgot about it. I need to finish it. But I've been really busy with the university. It's been hectic as hell. Even the putrid puppet master who dragged you in by the string seems too hesitant to interject just yet. He allows the silence to settle. Flickering candles, cold static and cartoon lunacy echo dully through the temple, for he casts his gaze over your head to the three behind you. Oh, and I appreciate the hard, hard work you must have put in to bring her here. We really couldn't have done it without you. I'm sure you could have done <laughs> Oh, Shucks, you're too kind. It was more fun than anything ever in the history of history. I'd so love to do it again. Do you have someone else in mind? Please, please, please tell me I have someone else in mind. Well, we did have someone else in mind, didn't we? <laughs> oh god, the, t the tonal whiplash of this already. The British bruiser grumbles in response. The motif, oh my god. The motif. And steps out to the side of the altar to address the much smaller purple blood directly. All right, cut the soft-handed pandering and explain to me why the fuck you had me bring her in. This bitch is a living liability. I'd never, I've never seen it that way. And pray tell, what is your shit-ripped vision? You truly don't see the value in this situation. She's fully at our disposal here. I thought you of all people would appreciate the showmanship put at play. This ain't no show. It's a headline act that's long since wasted my good graces. Soon as she gets both in the ditch, the sooner we can move on with the main event. I should have battered her bones well before you went spineless. The best made plans are malleable ones. It's why we work in probables. Probabilities. We could eventually make do with ambush after ambush. But why pill for the dead when you can interrogate the living? You agree, don't you? Their eyes bore through the coffin straight into yours. You refuse to waste your breath scoffing at them. Sort of like the instant gratification of bloodlust. From nowhere you can see, Sainru produces your visor and a, and a depowered YVS. YV, that's why I said. Blind you to strategy. Try not to frown, puffed up freak. Won't give her the satisfaction. Oh, believe me, bitch, I'm as clear eyed as ever. Then shut your mouth and pay attention. Puzzle grimaces like he just took a hard handed strike to the gut, recovering and recover, recovers and bears forward with a faint purple glow sparkling behind his eyes. He puts one meaty paw on Saint Rue's shoulder. Oh, I'll show you! And how would our soon to arrive leader take to that, do you think? Do you think we're gonna see Al? Or is she talking about, um, you know who? Pardon me. Puzzle snorts like a taunted bull and mumbles something under his breath. Sainru brushes his hand off her shoulder with smug del delicateness. I have As I was saying, I must thank you as much as them, Regulator. You truly did all the heavy lifting here. We could have gathered a list of targets on our own. We have the manpower. But you marvelously outdid yourself on our, our, self yourself on our behalf. Unstoppable. Day after day, shift after shift, led us to each and every little light we need to snuff out. As if she could have done it on her own. Just one shrill sentence, St. Rue's facade gives way to annoyance. Even if the mask Ormsi is wearing now is a spare, but ultimately decide you have bigger fires to escape to from your current frying pan. They're gonna fucking murder your bitch ass, I swear to god. <laughs> Need I remind you who still holds the keys to all of your lucks? 
I'm actually starting to think this voice I have been giving him is actually close to his actual voice. But he uses a voice modifier, is the thing. But I like this voice, so I'm going to keep it. She ran herself ragged. But who was there diverting her attention from point to point? Nobody but me. For Blinks, her miserable life was a game of chess, bound to checkmate at my hand. One grand spectacle sweeping towards this inevitable moment. Every one of my pawns moved in perfect harmony. I am the victor of this charade. Not you. Puzzle laughs a humorless laugh of threat. You've got some gonads waltzing into the belly of the beast to call us your pawns. Once he bows up to the, bows up to the Mirth Maniac in a pitiful attempt to seem bigger than he is, it ends with an abused, grease-painted sneer. You needed me for this lackluster plot to travel anywhere but the inside of your own empty head, fool. Without my graciousness incorporating with your scheme, this story would have ended before it began. I could have let the corporation find all of you. I could have rotted your, your entire infrastructure from the inside. And the only reason I didn't is because the idea of a true challenge appealed to me. Your bid for the absolution, your bid for absolution was not guaranteed without my aid. Stop pretending that it was. None of you could have done more than me. Not your cultists, not your crazed he hemoists, not even your precious whimpering Ed. <laughs> Sarah whips towards him, cutting the sentence short with a single hidden glare. Puzzle laughs again, this time with genuine mirth. No, no, let him talk. Born fucking mastermind, this one. I want to see how far down his own ass he can sink. Very well then. Let's hear your elaborate. Let's hear you elaborate on how you achieved anything my excellently trained sect, or the big strong clowns we keep on leashes couldn't have. The what? None of them have my style, nor my efficiency. Now, that's what sounds strange to me, because by your own admission, it took you blinks to capture this singular woman, and you tried to pass this off as a positive too. Just remember what it was just discussed. She was supposed to be dead long before she came here. Seems you failed the task readily. The time frame wasn't imperative. But it was. In fact, we're behind schedule thanks to your propensity to meander. There's only so long until the 22nd Peregrine strikes. If we ought to be vigilant about anything, it's that date. Could it be that it just happened to slip your mind? Omsi gawks at the as the assertion hangs in the air. Such a simple detail overlooked. He begins to sputter, scrambling for his words. It doesn't matter! I still did it! The results are right here in front of you! There's any other troll alive who could have pulled this off! Sabre gestures demonstratively towards Puzzle and Talald. This room alone contains two individuals who would have been capable of holding their own, with a situation to have been reduced to nothing more than a physical confrontation. But it didn't! My plans would have never allowed it! Plans? Happenstance. I don't know how else to tell you this, but we only allowed you to we only allowed you to participate because we expected you to die. Omsi's chroma beat seems to halt in his chest. What? Surely you can't be too shocked, can you? There are only so many ways your little schemes could unravel. Your plan was pockmarked with weakness weaknesses, but you were so enthusiastic. I couldn't help but give you a chance. Of course, we also consulted the sparingly few futures that could have result that could result from taking you on. The odds of your misfortune were twelve to one. Worst case scenario would have us rushing in to clean up your mess. Your death would have been the best case scenario. A loose end tying itself up. Alas, in a reality full of chances, there are no absolutes. You gave us a middling result, and thus, new doors have opened themselves to us. Open themselves to us. The gravity carried by Samri's bitter words rings clear. Omsi's pupils shrink as they dart around for sympathy, fancying the room for any sanctuary, but only meet with gaze after ice cold gaze. None of his jurors crack. He turns to you last. Cecily, you, you have nothing left to pursue. You, tell them! Tell them I was a worthy quarry. Tell them I pushed you to the edge of your wits. You know that I beat you! I followed the rules! I won! That's worth something to you, right? I did a good job! 
His eyes are wild with the desperate hope of a mouse scurrying for its life through the underbrush, just beyond the moor of an undead parasite searching for flesh. You swoop from your perch. Hardly. You took advantage of a momentary lapse in judgement. That's the only thing we share. Barely worth the effort. No! I ran your sanity down to the quick! I had you working for Blinks! I was doing my job. Anyone putting half as much effort in va into vagrancy could have occupied my time as well. You lie! You didn't care about anything else! Tell them that's not true! Tell them or they... They'll... There was nothing else for him to hide behind. He cannot win in a fight where he cannot run fast enough to escape. Even if he could, he knows they would find him. His only choice is to beg. But... This is your job, Regulator. To protect. You allow yourself a smug smile. Comes out with something resembling a snarl. My job is to protect law-abiding citizens from criminals. It shouldn't be too hard to derive your personal standing in that equation. Hypocrite! They're going to kill me! This is a fucking satisfying! You shrug and smile, your chain scraping gently against the concrete with a low rasp. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about that. If I deign to take the testimony of these criminals at face value, this is my this demise of your own making. Perhaps you would understand that if you had paid more attention to the ways of the society that reared you, rather than spit in its eye, first thing every rung climbing corporate grub learns is to make themselves essential to an operation. Please. So I'd let him get his grubby little claws any deeper when we attend them to. I'm afraid this game has been rigged from the start. <laughs> oh god. With the hum of a particular bouncy call, it's as though the priest begins a summoning. Tilald, my little bubblegum <laughs> Tilald, my little bubblegum flavoured pudding pop. Reappearing from nowhere in particular, the third head Balatron returns to chew the scenery. I know where this is. I think I know where this is going. They're going to make a joke out of this f death, aren't they? Yes, um, man, Bob. Willie Finger points to the green blood still reeling from shock. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This little boy has had a restless evening filled with grief. Uh huh. I think it would mean the world to him if you were to, if you were to cheer him up. Why don't you take him back to your block and play? Or are we not going to see it? Oh. The jester's face splits into a wide grin, a horizontal gash across her face, unnatural. There is nothing behind that smile. Talal tugs at Auntie's arm in a gesture that would indicate playfulness were it not for her big, big, very big indeed bopper. His slipping gaze suggests he likes to do anything but follow. Either her grip is stronger than her build implies, or the fight has left him in all but words. All he can do is mumble in knowing defeat. Kill yourselves, all of you. <laughs> oh my god! Candle sticks in the dark, flickering cast cold shadows, warping with Samu's every gesture, thin tendrils curling and snaking along the stark white floor. But rereading this, you will not be able to take Omsi seriously, will you? I must say, that's impressively ruthless of you, Miss Iapara. There's something ruthless about a basic observation. He's over everything that's coming to him, factually as an architect, engineers a building. Comments seem to fill Samu with a vitriolic glee. You have no idea how much it moves me that we can find something to agree on. Omsi and Talal disappear into the dark, though the boy's continued grousing echoes off the cavern walls, raspy like a drill in your ears. You can't help but follow the sound. You've been hunting it for blinks, blinks that felt like sweeps. You're magnetised to it. What is this? No, no, stop looking through those doors, silly! They're for Al's peepers purely! You won't like what you see! The hallway they walk decays into bitter black nothing your eyes can't pierce. You have no idea well, how, how deep the winding labyrinth of cells lies, how many grim rooms this temple hosts. But you know their purpose from experience. You've been under the knife. They're places you remember in the dimmest moments of dawn, flashing lights in your mind the second before you fall asleep. Every door chipped by deep nail gouges, chunks of ancient wood torn clean by desperate hands scrambling from one, for one last shot at life. Wires and pliers, 
battered wooden chairs with worn rope restraints. Stainless steel tables over stained white tiles sloping into blood-crusted drains. Unplugged power drills, the tips rusted and chipped with age and use. The staples of drug runners, of pal paramilitary enforcers with impartial for forcing as much as they can out of a victim. Men who trade pain for knowledge in cells the sons will never see. But there's more to this cult than that. You've systematically outwitted, outgunned, and outmatched every criminal organization you've encountered across your tenure. This place runs deeper. The icy depths beyond these rooms calls to you. You need to go further, much as it aches to imagine what lies in the endless empty plains beyond your visceral recollection. It's as old as the Renaissance, Renaissance here. <laughs> Spectres blow in, in from the wasteland, shielding this ruin and descend down to the bowels, to blackened bricks they remember from life. They mingle and trade forgotten secrets, stalking storerooms laden with enough supplies to outlast the end of all things, congregating in wretched shrines dedicated to calling it down. You dive deeper down, down into the belly of a corpse that'll never rot. It lies preserved against all effort, sustaining itself through a contract much older than you or any living troll. The rooms around you are its cells, crumbl crumbling cement walls cast long ago from limestone mined by thralls of Caesarian conquest. Above you, its putrid organs lie inert, factories and barren fields stretching beyond all sight and imagination. The mechanisms of a great death existing only to sustain its memory in the minds of the living. You're at the crown of the uh, of the an ancient war machine, a churning of un, un life into poten potential, into power, and in the hands of these cultists, into a weapon to crack this silicon edifice of corporate control. The fragile order Clara had imposed was never enough to root out the darkness eating away at the hearts of every troll, seeping from every pore, coursing through the dregs of society in a deluge of shadow. You did your best to bandage your wound inflicted long before your birth, to scrape away the rot, not knowing it would never be enough to stem the grim tide pulling down, down to the void below. In spite of every pathetic attempt to shake you from your mission, every lodged concern for your well-being, every complaint on your conduct, you knew this was down here, raging beneath the placid surface of a well-ordered world. Operation Stub and Blood will terminate here in these depths you've conjured, in the stillness before this forsaken place, where the nemesis that's opposed to you, your last blinks alive will face an end gentler than he deserves. But you're not over yet. <sighs> the smell of incense stirs you from your sunless caverns at the root of your mind, back to the brink of a desperate situation. You stand before the mouth of an abyss that laughs at creation, discerning its nature could be your only ticket out of here. You. So I return to our conference in the shadows. Me? Given that I'm no threat to your operation, surely you wouldn't mind answering a few questions. It's as you've said, come further than any. I deserve answers. Ugh. Search for truth justifies itself, if you'll have no one to share the results with. This is your mystery. You've come too far to let it stay buried. Sacrifice after gory sacrifice, wound after wound. Half a sweep of your life poured into solving this puzzle to picking up pieces after bloody peace. If this is the last thing you'll ever do before taking one final step beyond the threshold of life, into arms that have longed for you for sweeps from the dead void, it'll be for the sake of something that matters. The priest before you hums loudly, rhythmically, tapping his fingers against the altar. I suppose it couldn't hurt. Questions stumble out of you from the depths of your memory and cloud every lane of coherent thought outside the bounds of this mystery. Without a visor, without YVS, you still know it's there. One last time. Every casualty along the way and each lost, lost life yet to come. For the sake of truth. God. God, 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 God. I know we've got the epilogue left, but this is it. This is it. This is it. Alliance. Some theories for you to entertain. We are in the business of entertainment. Based on what I've been able to ascertain throughout this venture, harbages of what remains of the Mora, the Mora cult, correct? I have no hard evidence for it beyond testimonials for what I've assumed are former sub subordinates, but everyone I've met who feared you mention it by name. Very observant, Missy Opara. I must feel... I almost feel as though you are entertaining me. What made you shift the Mora into the Harmingers? Did one cult not serve your purpose well enough? Did you find Weird Al that captivating? I'm sorry, that's one question I'm not at liberty to answer. Because you know it will damn you. Nothing of the sort. Said it wouldn't hurt to answer your questions, but that's one I can't give away without risk. What risk could it pose when you already have me bound? There's nobody here but us. You can never be too sure. 
They're not going to budge on this, and it's an, it's an issue that you cannot solve. May as well move on. Alright. You're in alliance with the Mirthomaniacs, though. That's not a theory, it's a transparent fact. I needn't tell you, I needed to tell you that you are correct again. But I've cleaned enough colours off Proserpina to know that you're not running an all purple outfit here. I'm not sure how you've how much you've eavesdropped on my prior correspondences. Oh, I've just had food, by the way. I know no more than I need to, but ask anyway. I mentioned to Ormsi that case files from units under my command have all noted the Murth noted the Mirthomaniac's distant tendency against cooperation. How did a splintered cult like yours swing an alliance like that? Was I wrong in my assumption that they're a joyless sort? Do they simply enjoy hard work in the name of fun? Same room glances past you with the hulking purple blood staring boredly at the shadows on the floor. Oh no, we weren't that lucky, sadly. It took a little blackmail, some brute force. Primarily, though, it was impossible for either of our six to deny the benefits of convening forces. You have the contacts, the embedded operatives, the knives in the night. They have the muscle and ideological determination required for their task ahead. Muscle bound. Muscle bound tearing Lowblood's limb to limb, yes. Radical as your cult may be, surely you see the structural flaws of lying with cast extremists. How so especially idealistic of you, Regulator? We live in a society far too harsh to turn our noses up at petty differences in ideological aesthetics. Aesthetics. How shallow, how shallow you justify brutality. Semantics, then, if it pleases you more. The minute, the minute, minute matters little. We have a world to win. But in long term, Puzzle steps up to you and rests a meaty paw on your shoulder, swinging hard enough to break the bone of a weaker troll. If your intention here is to drive some kind of wedge between our operations, you'd best strongly reconsider. Today our usefulness to one another expire expires will be long. Today our usefulness to one another expires will be long, long after you draw your final breath. That was a weird sentence. So save it. And cut to the fucking chase on this here line of questioning. Their ranks may be stained with all the shades of filth. But the purple run this gig. The purples run this gig. And we keep them in check. That's all that fucking matters to me. He releases his death grip. Throbbing blood rushes back to your trapezius. We deploy our assets well, Regulator. Radical as they may be, muscle is muscle. It's gotten us this far, hasn't it? Beliefs. I know how trolls like you operate. You subsist on a web of mystical... Of mystical lies you convince every troll around you must be true beyond all doubt. The worst of your kind buy into their own falsehoods. So what do you... what, what, what do you believe? Savory smiles at you with all the cruel, patient joy of a serpent coiling around paralyzed prey. Pacing behind the slab, he launches into a sermon he must have been wanting, waiting to deliver from the second you awoke. What do we believe, Regulator? That the history of this planet is a history of agony, of meaningless pain, endless toil in infinite fields. One long tragedy is curtain drawn the second our wretched species crawls from the mud. It didn't stop when we moved to the strongholds. It didn't stop with automation. The pain was merely transmuted, shifted out of sight, hidden behind the screens of phones. Nothing has changed, Regulator. Repiton is Repiton. A world of slaughter built on the graves of billions of damned souls, wailing in the night. Listen closely. Can't you hear them? She pauses for effort, glancing back at you over her shoulder. All I hear are the sanctimonious ramblings of a madman. Sanctimonious! Regulator, you wound me! Hoped any Aparo of all trolls would understand the weight of the past, given your ancestors' role in shaping it. The dead man's conduct has little bearing on my own. She smiles at, at you like she knows. I have trouble believing that. The storm of history howls across the wastes. We're all caught in its violent tempests, wind tearing the flesh from our bones. Do you really think you can escape it by telling yourself that what's dead is dead? Do we live in an enlightened age, safe from archaic brutality? Every troll on this planet is crushed under the weight of dead generations. Spectres tearing at the thin strands of sanity holding us together. We are, all of us, haunted, pursued down dim corridors by beasts who knew our names before birth. Would you like to stop running? Would you like the nightmares to end? I don't dream, not the way your lot does. Witless thugs, weak-willed con artists. 
morally deficient anarchists desperate with the hope of crumbling civilization. I dream of saving what is in my reach. You live in a fairy tale world. And you live in a sterilized shell you've convinced yourself is sealed off from history. From the frozen dark outside of your fragile exterior. Your strongholds don't protect you or anyone from the agony of this world. They compress it, scoop it all up and dump it in one big writhing core of pain. All of history is death, all its horror liquefied into plastic or burned for power. All channeled into raw, agonizing noise. Painful noise that never ends. You know this better than anyone else, Miss Yapara. Your job is to regulate this pain according to the standards of your superiors. Keep at it. Keep it at tolerable, tolerable levels. But I have to ask you. After everything you've seen these past few blinks, for all you've done and suffered for over the course of your storied career, might it be better if the pain simply ended? Again, you're delusional. Oh, regulator. You're the delusional one here if you think you can free yourself from the past. From your past. Your loved ones, the name carved into your sigil, all chains of a dead world. I've watched you closely. Don't think you can talk circles round to make me heal. Your corporation offers nothing as sublime as the hope for our cult inspires. I hope that this nightmare can end. But I'm not here for the philosophical debate. Neither are you, for that matter. You do good to spend what little time you have left doing more than flinging hollow insults. The ritual. This altar, these candles. Quite enough deranged cultists and actors know none of. No, none of this is decoration. The priest before the priest before you falls silent for a long moment, contemplating the implicit question. The faint sound of flickering candles and whistling wind oozes into the void of sound. Hello. So all that answers answering. Her hands go to her blindfold, slowly untying. Eyes still closed when she slips it off and dangles it over the altar like a long sacrificial knife. Oh, goodness. As the cloth falls, he opens his eyes, locking uncomfortably with yours. Cold derangement, lurk, derangement, derangement lurks behind his delicately applied eyeliner. It appears that their psyop is activated, but you can't tell what it's doing. The end, regulator. My end, that is. Birth of a new world from the cavity of my corpse. I'm, only, I'm to be the foremost harbinger, the herald of silence. It's only through my death that any bear, any can bear witness to the devastating revelation his arrival implies. My death will secure that, secure that dream, that blessing. It's so ridiculous in its predictability that you can't help but laughing. Sound echoing an, an alien in the cavernous poles of this temple. What? The root of this was mere manic su suicide. Suicidality all along. I've killed fistfuls of grunts like this, you this half sweep alone. Con into going down swinging, blowing up buildings on the off chance they'll take a regulator down with them. Bodies into the meat grinder. A loop a dozen. Untie me. I can give you a much better end than whatever nonsense you've concocted. I should have known you'd be too short sighted to understand the implications of this sacrifice. I don't actually know what um, Sangru Psyop is. I don't know if. Hmm. I, might, I have an idea, maybe, but that's... I'll, I'll tell you later. I have no simple desire for death, Regulator. I certainly have no desire to fall to the artless end you would inflict on me given a fair chance. Yes, my end will come soon after yours. But the outcomes, the legacies of each of our choices couldn't be more different. You will die hated or by all but a spare few who are left to grapple with your false judgments before falling to our agents. But I, Regulator Yopara, I will live forever. Yeah, uh huh. Uh huh. Then my role in the grand schema of a repeated eternity is minor. I will be made a conduit for a great rebirth and even greater destruction. It's used by hands far greater than my own. My legacy will be etched into the remaining bones of this planet, written in the wake of the overwhelming calmness that will follow his arrival. They pluck their blindfold off the altar, tying it back over their eyes. Their hand shakes with emotion. True believer to the end. The blood. What's your intentions with the vivifier's blood? That's what all this was for, wasn't it? Hmm. He tilts his head demurely, inquisitive, as though trying to play innocent. You're unsure if it's meant as a taunt or if the vial really doesn't matter that little to her. The blood is merely a formality. It means to an end. Which end would that be? Just deliciously obsessed with finality. 
They're all the same as far as I'm concerned. But you're about the, part, the archetypes you're assigned to protect. <clears throat> Pardon me. There's that word again. Archetypes. You've had no idea what it meant since you first heard it uttered. It makes even less sense now. But in this context, you can put two and two together. What does this have to do with the Reigns and Vurath descendants? There are better questions to ask than that. You already know of their importance, don't you? Here, I'll do the favour of asking what should be running through your mind. They lead in close, close enough for you to feel their breath run over the bridge of your nose. What doesn't have to do with them? The Vivifier's title is such because of her blood, yes? An animator, a rejuvenator in part, a healer. It closes wounds and extends the lives of those who take it into their veins. The faithful believers in her thaumaturgy knew of it as life personified. The distillation of Caparia, a reincarnation of the All Mother's will. For most, it is a myth. But for the chosen few, for the twelve descendants ushered into this world, pressed into their veins, it binds them with a heinous curse. He titters, nearly giggling. She clearly finds the idea absurd. The curse of immortality. Immortality. This is what it's all built up to. One of Koliad's fever dreams may manifest. Why would you seek more immortality? Trying to squeeze blood from a stone does not even benefit you. The concept run opposite to your cult's whole ethos, and it presently does not exist. But if ever find the forgiven met their ends. That was their choice, the condition they needed to meet. Just as a young condition they must meet. Boons bestowed upon them were only given so that they would be, be passed down. Insurance, you could say. I pity them. Curse is as apt as a descriptor as it gets. I imagine no greater suffering than the potential to live forever. What is this implying? Uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm reading this right. Your mind races. What purpose does this variation of immortality serve? Why do they need protection despite it? We've let them know they have this power. Surely Claridge and his inner circle must at least. Your internal monologue is interrupted before long. But their lives and powers don't interest me. They, too, are a means to an end. I am only interested in what Lime Blood is capable of when merged with his essence. There are places we can't see that he can access, Regulator. An abyss that counteracts the prisons the All Mother creates. I don't like the sound of this. A place that dictates the flow of this world, of reality's fabric. What comes of this blood and the events soon to pass? It will give us our own insurance. We're still lost. All you can do is wait for further elaboration. Another question for you, Missy Apara. Do you believe in the power of the soul? It's something every troll thinks about at some point or another. The meaning of their own lives, the power dwelling within them, the embodiment of their person made manifest. I do. I know of alchemy. I know of the power that the soul can produce when pushed well past its limits. Now that you fail to recognize that souls are simply impure. It's not like Ormsey for a brief moment. Fill the darkness, all of us. Darkness that can be taken, can be harnessed, can become power. The power to control creation, control meaning itself. His abyss is locked. My soul will be made a key, and the blood is will let him into the physical world. Homunculi, as they're called, and their essence of the All Mother and the Nought Father merge with a soul. Oh no! Uh oh! I. So what? You intend to create a monster in the North Father's image and hope that it accomplishes something? Do we know what that is yet, or is that going to be something entirely new? They keep talking about probability, so there's got... They have some, They've got a... I wonder if they have some kind of tie to Mimesis. I, don't, I doubt it. But they, I feel like the two are going to interact at some point. I, keep, I still look at it, the fucking mic. I'm talking into it, that's why. You do realize this means you will die quite literally for nothing, don't you? That's not what's going to happen at all, Regulator. Another lilting laugh. You're getting impatient. I'll still be there in spirit, making Yami for the love of my life to control. He deserves everything after what you took from him. You have a sinking feeling you know who they're referring to. We already know through the hand. You know the hand. You know the hand. <laughs> this makes no sense to me. I crash asking you anything at all. You just fail to see the big picture as you always do. I'd like to remind you of our credo here within the Harbingers. So we lose it even closer, so close their teeth nearly graze your ear. Whisper only for your for your ears. 
Something the others can't hear. A broken promise. You're not wrong. I will die for nothing. I will die in perfection, as will all else. No world will be inherited. Not by the archetypes, not by any cult leaders and their delusions of grandeur. Not by anything at all. Me and my dear heart, we will free Gion. The only thing we want is to tear down what we can ourselves before it all goes silent. We're owed that much, I think. You're insane. You're, you're a fucking lunatic. Perhaps. But that can be our secret. A secret none will see. Except for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, this has actually been brought up somewhere. Um, but we do know White Noise does know about the threat these will cause. He knows. Hell you two yammering on about down there. Nothing important. Just what I want our... I just want our... Just that I want our guests to be happy. Is that it, then? I've exhausted your curiosity. In the ruins outside, an angry wind blows through the husks of skyscrapers, whistling, whistling, sharpened into icy knife points by the ragged walls of artificial canyons. Behind, behind you, beasts work themselves half to death in cages that'll never budge. They cower in fear from the animal cold that runs wild through the halls of this empty temple. I don't know if that's a temple. Your body is warm with the last rush of adrenaline you might ever taste. The feeling of closing an investigation for good. But the chill reaches you, you still. You shiver. I'm satisfied. Excellent. She leaves your sight. You do not care to follow where they travel this time. Dolo, darling. I believe you can take it from here. Oh, oh, here he comes! <laughs> the dragging of sandals on stone echoes lightly across the chamber. You strain against your bindings in the sound's direction. A gaunt man st st steps from the shadows and slides up next to Sainru. They give his hand a gentle squeeze before disappearing behind the altar. As he nervously leans forward into the light, they make out his features for the first time. A downcast face, a pair of hooked, familiar horns. It was your first call to the corporate's office's topmost floors. Are we going to learn more about what happened? Taught with nerves, you mentally comb through your memorized performance record, finding no fault, starting again over and over. The heights beyond the window gave you vertigo. It would take you a decorate to learn to comfort yourself by memorizing minute shifts in the city's boundlessness. We are, aren't we? Mr. Enthal, who yet stood, if not upright, placed a hand on his apprentice's shoulder and granted you a promotion. All your fell left you with one left you with one small smile. Not so the young Edelon Vrick. Who diminished towards the floor with every word. All news to him was bad news. Mr. Enfall's businessman demeanor never wavered. We understood the purpose of having the child in the room. Not many sweeps later, you do the same to Hecrix and the smaller Enthal. He was given a test of determination and he had failed. <laughs> it's the Templar sexy man! <laughs> Fuck that face, oh my. Um. So what does that? What happened then? Okay, I don't know if, we're, if that's going to be kept a secret for later. Anyway, the job before you has only, has only grown in body, in mind and spirit. This is the same slouching coward. You should have known. Only those hiding ill intentions curl in on themselves with such secrecy. No wonder he disappeared from corporate. Dolo. Out the corner of your eye, Samuru steps forward, taking Adelon's hand in hers. She squeezes it gently. So spent your life protecting righteous bonds and now watching these scoundrels partake in affection it makes you nauseous. Edel approaches you, taking Sainru's place as they retreat into the sacrificial slab's gloom. With Sainru knelt beside you, Edelon tries to loom. It only emphasizes his stoop. You laugh. To your displeasure, so does Puzzle. Well, what is it, lover boy? Scared of dirtying your robe? Edelon glances in Puzzle's direction. His eyes drift instinctively to the altar, to the rim of darkness in the vague outline of Sane Room. This is your moment. Everything I'm here to obliteration belongs to you. Edelon looks back to you, not quite straightening, after adopting a sort of loose ease in his irreparable posture. Shadows pull beneath his eye, eye bags, with grief of the exhausted. What was his voice? I forgot his voice! Regulator. A voice small enough to fit a grub. You don't know what you expected. You realize now you've never heard him utter a single word before. Rick. 
So you do remember. Spare me the minced words. You and a lot are well informed of my abilities. Right. Don't back off now. Don't gotta... Gotta go and see your big boy pants. As one clenches his fist at the sound of Puzzle's cackling, despite yourself, you smile. Then with a sort of quiet resignation, Edelon waits. Puzzle keeps laughing to himself for a while, longer than most would after realizing no one's laughing at him. Eventually, the awkward mirth, mirth leaves him. He's left leaning against the altar, wearing his tough guy's scowl. Anyway. It has been quite some time. I could have expected this would be a... This to be where we meet again. You speak as though you were, we were lifelong friends. By, by the time you left off Moses, I already killed my first criminal. Maybe so. Literally so. And despite these crucial differences, we've been intertwined, beginning to end. You roll your eyes. Once more, I've made corpses older than you. And from my gathering, this might be my end, but it unfortunately isn't yours. Leave past Edelon's side, projecting your tired voice as best as you can into the clown collective at the back of the room. For your own sake, I hope none of you had prepared any more grandstanding monologues, because I'll be skipping to the point. You and I are nothing alike. Sure. In spirit, in morals, in bodies, no one could say we resemble each other. Isn't that worth something? The two trolls could be raised by the same hand, as kids inheritors of the same corporation. Diverge so far in their paths. And still converge here. Looking back at Edelon, you realize the question isn't rhetorical. The corporation didn't raise me for one. Not beyond the redu reduplication cabins. I myself aided in the fostering of the heirs that surpassed you. Our positions are nothing alike. Edelon curls his lip. You found your mark. Point being. They're doing well, by the way. For a moment you can hear his teeth grit. His eyes twitch as the mere mention of Sestro. And how do you determine that? By how well they fulfill their duties, or by how closely they resemble you. Certainly not by their health, not even by their individual achievements. You're extrapolating from your own sad abortive time from, with the corporation. There's no, one, there's no one on this broken planet that doesn't have a personal relationship with corporate. A bad one at that, unless you happen to rule it. Which you don't, and neither do I. No one does, save one dying old man, and soon his heir. No one makes a cursory attempt to wipe the floor free of dust, then sits. It's been a long life of kidding myself. It's taken me until now to realize my only mistake was wanting too much for myself, and not enough for corporate. Normal people call this a criminal mindset. I suppose you've purchased in blood the right to determine who the normal people are. The kind of transaction the other party can't refuse, like a chess master against a rookie. The rules are fair. The match isn't. Oh god, the smile. Edelon fluffs up, pleased with himself. I guess you'd enjoy chess metaphors. Hardly a difficult guess. It's an infectious game. Miss Renfall used to play it with me. Can't imagine what pleasure he got out of beating a five-sweep old. Have he picked it up from you, or you from him? You know. You decide you don't care. He remains one of the few players I can't trounce in 16 moves. But was he proud of that? Not privy to the emotions of others. Would he smile? Or smiling started hurting his joints, yes. Edelon's chuckle sounds so much like yours, dry and mirthless and like Sestro's, defensive and downbeat. I loved that smile. I wanted to see it often. I wanted to earn it. I never learned what he smiled for. He smiled because he was proud of your play, or your work, your efficiency, your hard rationale. He doesn't exactly live inside my think pan. Of course not. You live in his. Your line of work requires no small amount of assumptions about the characters of others. Think, Regulator. What we meant to him is what you meant to corporate. It's why he, it's why he can divest himself so easily of, well, normal people all form connections in time. Sestro, future heir, not yet old enough to read. Miffy struggling out of her t-shirt phase. How could they have been anything but together, leaning on each other through every test? Connections are formed through mutual responsibility, which you contrive to owe to no one. You of all people cannot expect Rebaton's most burdened man to act as the rest of us. Expect? I expect nothing of him. He has done more what he needed to do, and he will do no more. I would even be given the pleasure of watching him die. 
You are free to arrive at your point whenever. My point is that even the chief regulator is not the regulator corpse. Leads in close to Whisper. And I am one of the Harbingers. But I am not the Harbingers. He keeps on talking as though you were his mere captive audience. Which, well, granted. As long as we were in corporate service, we must have never took for ourselves. Wouldn't this make the corpor corporation the criminal? You scoff. I've heard this delinquent rhetoric as often as I've heard pleas for mercy. Sometimes as pleas for mercy. There's nothing you could give me. Certainly not mercy. I just wanted to talk you, with you for once, Regulator. Whether you recognize it or not, you're part of me. And I wanted to please you just as much as I did him. I lost half a lifetime of untold alchemical power to the corporation. Just as he didn't pull, a, pull out a specibus and rob me, doesn't mean it wasn't stolen. So, what did they take from you, Regulator? Sweeps of sleep, sweat, blood, blood scars. Peace with Mashiri. Just see what Sestra and Hathi will become. Alina. Everything but Proserpina. Your eyes must be drifting more than you would realized. Edlon looks at your blade, lying on the floor. I needn't ask its name. May I see it? I can't stop you. Edlon draws Proserpina from a scabbard, like the altar and the robes. It gleams even in the low light. Symbol of perfect purpose tucked away in this miserable hole. Is that? Is this, I, is this where this is going? It's a fine sword. Mr. Enthal said the same thing. He would. I'd appreciate the relics of a past era while trying to bow, over, bow, bowl it over. Steal the best, bury the rest. Nothing so simple. This blade belonged to my ancestor, Caesar's most zealous killer. But not for me. It'd lie rotten in the wreck of some failed palazzo. I polished and sharpened it. I gave it a name and purpose for our era. Every day I clean it free of the past's blood. And you wet it with the blood you favour. What else is a sword for? Creatures of purpose, you and I. I can't say I understand you, given our opposing, opposi po opposing positions. But it's admirable, to a level. I got a vision of what I'll become. Only self-flagellating. Someone who stops at nothing. I would be tempted to agree if I suffered from a clinical shortage of moral fibre. Edelon places your blade on the floor in front of your knees. How many? 222. Regrettably one short, unless you plan to loosen my bonds. Oh, we will. But don't expect the last kill to be yours. The shadows shift. A scene of sickly orange light rips the darkness apart. Through the mattering spiral within comes a long pair of legs clad in slacks, sleeves rolled up with alchemist's hands, an endless mat of hair falling like death's cloak over skinny bones. You've seen this man on television all your life. Oh, it is! It's happening from a comedian's criminal, from entertaining to enrapturing. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Is this where we're going? Oh my god! Ritala praises you with the detachment of a god. Back of the heartbeat. I can't fucking take this seriously. Vastera introduced me to Weird Al, by the way. <laughs> In the back of your think when you can feel the pressure of the wretched temple <laughs> by the second. His face remains as inscrutable as on camera, only you're the one on display. He beckons toward the shadows, sandals shuffle in your peripheral vision. I'm pretty sure he has, because of his power over space and time, he talks through the narrative like carapations. I'm, that's my theory anyway. Because I think he will. Your wrists come free. Edlon slips back into your sight, Proserpina in one hand. The remains of your blind bindings to the other. I'm sure the man before you requires no introduction. He, hand he hands you the sword, performing a derisively elaborate bow in the process. You take it without giving his mischievous smile a dignity of acknowledgement. I can picture this animated, I can picture him coming out of the pole. <laughs> it's... Wait till warps the pressure of the room without moving a muscle beyond slowly scanning your face, your strength, the way you, sh you shift the weight of Proserpina on your hands. Testing the feel of your steel for what you know will be the final time. You search your heart for the convictions that carries you through every one in your every one of your fights. It's so funny how different this is. I imagined this that this would end with a duel between Cecily and Omsi, but nope. It's it's Cecily versus weird fucking Al. <laughs> this track slaps. The conviction of that rule of law will carry the day, with or without you. That laying down and dying in the face of overwhelming odds would spit in the face of that order. 
You find your will with a long breath. He presses one palm against the other, and a faint orange glow burns brighter as he draws them apart slowly. <laughs> a vicious black blade manifests in the space between his hands. It grows from his palms, edging all raw and jagged, until at last it exists in full, hovering, waiting to be wielded. I can... Okay, I could picture the the fiancé scene in the city animated. I think I'm gonna be, be picturing this. Is that a demon? Wait, hold on. Is that a demon slayer? I don't know. Probably not. He smiles at you for the first time when he takes a sword, hefting it over his shoulders without visible effort. Take another deep breath, raising the tip of Proserpina forward while you exhale. This is gonna be like the prologue. He returns the gesture, resting the jagged edge of his sword against yours. Black as the sea in your periphery, it, re it rejects direct observation, refutes it. You step back, like strong arms level. Winter looks down on you, the slightest curl to his upper back, a predator stance. Once more, Cecily, superpowers do not make a combatant do not a combatant make. As long steps to the side between both of you, his frail figure a linchpin holding the tension together. He raises his hand, holding the remains of the ropes that bound you, and looks to Weird Al, who nods. Returns to you, you do the same. Edelon opens his fist. The rope slithers out of his hands with an almost con conscious in inexorability spiraling down the dead air. It touches the ground. You circle Weird Al. Is this... I think this is... Is this... Zero? Maybe? I don't know. As you reach the periphery of his vision, he simply returns to keep facing you. You try again. He repeats himself, unmoving, save for this minute effort of following your motions. Smug, or amateur. As you fail to slip outside his sight a third time, you spring for the dead zone behind his shoulder. Step back one, two, three times the rhythmic whistle of Al's blade cutting the air itself. You duck, weave. Four steps to the wall, you can't afford to get cornered. Parry. Afraid the monstrosity of a sword would shatter Prospina on contact, you curl in, raise your free wrist to meet Weird Al's at, at the apex of a downward blow. The tremor that follows, tra that follows travels down your forearm and rings your skull. Weird Al is stronger than you. Much, much stronger than you. You had a follow-up, a stab through the plexus while his arm is up. It dies in the wave of pain, throwing angrily out of your wrist. When you realize you're screaming, you bite down, back away as best you can. Weird Al just watches with all this mechanical interest of a television camera. Try to move your left hand's fingers. All it gets you is fresh agony, shooing up your arm in furious flashes. White knuckle the pain. Stand up straight. He spared you. It'll be his last mistake. Putting some distance between you and your opponent, you wait for him to make the first move. He fights a straightforward lunge, quick and brutal, predictable. The flat of his blade is wide open. Repost. Repost. I think that's how you say that. I don't know. It just. You swipe Al's sword away with your own, clearing a path straight to his heart. However, through you nearly trip. Something tugs at your midsection. The tip of Weird Al's blade comes up to his face, a blackened hole in space dripping. Teal. Wet warmth seeps out of your jacket. Oh no. It's like the fucking sword. Does the sword in Bungo Stray Dogs do that? I don't remember. He runs down your leg, puddling on the icy floor. You look down, piece of your intestines hang out of a novel hole in your s Oh god! Distantly you assess the fact that your jacket must be hiding the worst of it. Your lunges will be lopsided now. With what the missing abdominals. But you can still fight. Doesn't even hurt, not yet. That is an autistic thing, apparently like large injuries hurt less than small ones. I don't know. <laughs> I've not I haven't experienced that yet. You look like weird Al, reckoning cold emptiness. It's sort of saying Stevi inv invitation. Lunge. You verbalize an attack. Spurn into the forefront of your mind with absolute clarity. This art is so good. The path to your opponent's blood pusher. The effable muscle memory. Your body refuses. It stands still and, and fails. The air around you drops to its nadir. Too hostile to breathe. You'd be close to passing out even if you weren't Exsangu exsangu exsanguinating by the second. The temple is as dead as the wastes, like someone blotted, blotted out the suns above. Ripped a hole in the sky, let every ounce of warmth ooze out the wound. Weird Al towers over you. There must have been some evidence of your motion, some diminutive twitch of your shoulders betraying your intent. He brings one hand up and snaps his fingers. Flex of your blood burst out of nowhere and onto your cheek, narrowly missing your eye. Turning to your right, you find Proserpina on the ground, still in the grip of your arm, intact up to the shoulder. Your pusher pumps life from many wounds out of your veins, flowing into a glistened pool now creeping past your periphery. It burns as it goes, saturating your shirt. Conclude. In short order, this is it. Sir? 
Al turns toward the interruption. Fall to your knees, freed from one tether of his attention. He would I feel this is more poignant ending to this chapter. It takes a lot of weird out to stop his commitment to a farce. The notion intrigues him. For a moment, it's as though he's an excited child. He's not spoken. Let's get a hand on Weird Al's shoulder. He gestures towards Edelon. He's too absorbed in the de destruction wrought to your body to notice. Dolo. Edelon blinks and starts on him. He's last to arrive at the obvious conclusion, triangulating his gaze from Sane Rule Sane Rue to Al to what remains of you. Even Al takes a step back. With shaky steps that stabilize as he goes, Edelon steps towards your mutilated arm and pries your fingers off Proserpina. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Regulator. Have the decency to clean it. Smirking, Edelon wipes Proserpina on your severed sleeve. Last words? The dedication, the dedication perhaps? It's your inevitable failure. It was, yeah. With no deep chuckle, he lifts the sword. And to this filthy world's first cleansing death. Your focus is rooted to the feeling of your of Prosper, Prosperpina's point. Again, the name's not consistent. Pressing into your throat. A surface wound drawing what little blood your body has left. Sight of the blade beyond. This is what it's like for them. Very rich criminal you've ever held to the sword to contemplate their life in the slim few moments before you snuff it out. Firelight dance on Proserpina's polished surface, warping orange, crimson, burgundy for just a moment. You weren't meticulous enough. Yet she stain lingers. Where is where is she? I was I I forgot to mention I thought she might appear in this. I don't know. Will she forgive you in time? You don't have the energy to decide if you can forgive her. If her transgressions justified your wrath. If crime isn't met with punishment, then what kind of world are you leaving behind? Last of your strength, you tap on your breast pocket, your sigil, and beneath your Trolldex card. The last of you. Edelon nods, as though it made sense to him. How absurdly little you share after all. Lays a hand on your shoulder, parody of understanding, and runs your blood pressure through. Spasm but once, limp against the blade. You are bereft of adrenaline. Your nerves have long shut down. Death at its apex feels as though you always suspected. Nothing at all. Exhausted eyes close on their own, no matter how many times you force your lids back open. Your body is shutting down without you. Hole in your side aches. The, wretch the wreckage of your arm <laughs> um, um, aches. You don't have the strength to keep these wounds closed with one hand. Your time is limited. Was there a point to all of this? All the pain received over... I knew it. Over the sweeps. All the agony inflicted. All the gore washed from skin time and time again. The rainbow stains worn into the cracked white tiles around your shower drain. You gave your youth to the corporation. You gave your love... You gave comfort to the children who will weep if they find your body. <laughs> a guiding hand to a staff of regulators will be lost in your wake. Will they, rem will they remember you kindly? Will anyone? The dregs of Repiton will, for some time. If you've done anything of value in your time on this planet, it's embedding the equation of punishment deep in the minds of every, every would-be criminal. Let no trolls say you weren't principal to the end. It had to be for something. You kept the night away. You cleaned the streets of drug peddling scum. Put enough murderers in the ground to ease the sick aching loss their surviving beloveds must, felt, must feel. You feel the thin plate of armour keeping the claws of criminals straight and sharpened from the soft belly of civilised order. You're struggling to keep the wound shut. Fingers slipping on torn flesh. Warmth courses through your side. What will they do without you? Did you prepare them? 
Ramshackle few gathered in that apartment. Are they able to bear the brunt of what's coming? Can they weather the storm on the horizon? Are they ready? A teal pool around your legs seeps in through the thin fabric of your trousers, cooling by the second as it spreads over the concrete. We praise the old mother that you hardened them enough to make it to tomorrow. She's waiting for you on the other side. You can join her now. Stop struggling and you have to let yourself have one thing. It's happening. One last deep breath of sick ozone air. Copper and candle smoke. Incense just beyond. You let go of your side. You can't feel it anyways. You believe your memory will be warm in the hearts of the ones who care. And the cold to shadow lurking scum. Rest will understand in time. That's all you want. Your blood smells like honey and lilac. You hope she'll be proud. That was volume 12 of Snowbound Blood. We knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. I think if I had, you know, if I had managed to read all of it today, I probably would be crying now, but I just, you know, it's been, it's been that long since, you know, I just, Guess that I don't know. I mean, hey, two of my predictions were right. <laughs> I mean, two of my only predictions, really. <laughs> now, yeah. I don't. I don't really have anything to say. Really, I don't. I don't know what to say. I'm kind of. <laughs> I just feel empty. Now we just have. Well, yeah. Now all we have left is the epilogue, and then that's the end of Snowman Blood. It's been. I'll you know what, I'll leave that till um next episode uh, next episode when the epilogue comes out actually. I mean I don't I don't I'm not sure what's gonna happen. 
I'm not sure if it's gonna if it's gonna be um whose perspective it's gonna be. My initial thought was white noise, but I'm assuming it might be you know everyone finding out about you know. But obviously, you know, I'm a simple thinker. I don't, you know. I think, oh, okay, yeah. I think the Weird Al fight did kind of detract from the the serious of, seriousness of the situation. Because how it was, it was goofy. It was goofy. It was good. It was good, but it was goofy. It was goofy. It was so goofy, bro. Um, yeah, I, yeah. My um, my voices were a bit rustier than I hoped they'd be, but I don't know. Yeah. Thank. Thanks for watching. Um, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Um. I'll get. I'll do the, my my next vast area video will be when the uh, Murray Flash comes out. I'll because I I don't like to do like small videos. I like of vast area. I like to read a whole chunk. That's why I've left it so far. Um, but yeah, I'll try and I've got um plans to upload uh, videos for my game. <laughs> Not so. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a shill. Um, yeah, I've got still got corpse party to upload. I've got some uh tier list videos to upload if anyone want to be interested in that all this recorded last year um i think it's um i've just been lazy and you know the uni's been busy but yeah anyway yeah you don't want to hit you don't want to hear me about my stuff but um thanks for watching thank you everyone thank good thank you to this should i go through the credits again i think i should um Thank you to um, Austin, Eddie, Kate, um, Andrew, Heather, Zam. Uh, oh, I should say their names, not their actual names. Uh, Veritas Yune, Alienoid, Kate, again, Pip, Alienoid again, Austin again, um, Ciro, Leon, um, Pragmatic Nihilist, ne uh, Neptune, Charlie, Julia, Valerie, uh, Big Chalupa, Aussie, Old Shoe, um, ba Banner, or Banner, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I think I said Eddie. Um, Aussie, like my brother. Um, Chuchimi, Hallie, Dia, Dust, Tyson. Uh, <laughs> that that name. Uh, James Roach, Split Sons, Viridian, R and D, I think. Uh, Moon Moon Sweater, Gumi <laughs> Gumi. <laughs> um, Kalakala. Uh, Rom M. And Heather. And anyone else? Oh yeah, um, that the the, the, the other di no, did I say no no I got the miss with dear Diz yeah, Fia Nick and Mary Yankovic, wait, <laughs> ah that's funny. This isn't really but what happened to those two is really fucking tragic. That's it was yeah anyway, uh, off topic. Um, X Tyne, Izu, Lup Biscuit, Mocha, Peko, Tiny Sneeze, and Captain Captain Falcon David. That was it. Yeah, <laughs> that's just, that's going to be a joke at the end of every episode. But yeah. Um. Oh, and uh, thanks, thanks, obviously, to the most important important person, Renpai. Um. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you for watching. Thanks to everyone who watches this. I might actually post this one on the Discord this time. I've always been afraid of posting my videos on the Discord. I don't know why. Okay, it's just a confidence thing. But um, yeah. I'll, I'll see you at the end of Snowbound Blood.
Bye.